Welcome at the University of the Netherlands lecture series by Rolf Hutt. This is the lecture on how often you need to measure to not have a boat run into your bridge. The original lecture was done in Dutch and this is the dubbed English version. I dubbed this in one go so there may be some issues with lip syncing and I did not dub the intro which is in Dutch. So don't step away in the next few seconds because after the intro we'll continue in English. Here we go. Waarom varen boten nog steeds tegen bruggen aan? Dit is de Universiteit van Nederland. It's it's very quickly a big disaster when a boat hits a bridge. This really happened and not so long ago. Millions and millions of damage. So you really want to be sure if you build a bridge or if it's already there, uh, Rotterdam has a few, you want to be sure if a, if a ship fits under it. So classically what they did is they they just stood with a pole on the on the boat and then they just tried does this fit. Um, but then you'll have to stop your ship and a ship like that has a lot of inertia. It's very hard to stop that. It ha you need a lot of power to do that and then to get going again. So you want to measure beforehand, does this ship fit under this bridge? You have to deal with a number of phenomena. Uh, in a previous lecture, I showed that you can measure water level with sound. In a system like that, there's a number of forces that play together. Uh, for example, you have tidal forces. Um, I can show this in a number of different ways. Um, tide, tide is a very slow happening phenomena. Um, I may need some assistance. Um, we'll see. So what tidal, the, the tidal representation in this, uh, in the, this small system is just getting this out. And then you can see that the water level will drop a little bit. And, and in this body of water, it only is about an inch worth of, uh, of water level change. Um, one of the other forces that you have to consider that will consider that will cause waves. So you have wind-induced waves, and they, they may look like this in this small uh, representation. Or you have waves induced by boats themselves that pass by. They, they are even shorter wavelengths. And they all play together. And that's tricky if you're, if you're um, operating a bridge and you want to know if a ship fits. So if, if you want to know how often you have to measure the water level to make a good decision, that's kind of hard. Um, so we're pouring back the tide. And you can see that happening on the graph over there. And the wind waves have about the same amplitude as the tidal wave. So um, how, that, how that changes is, is very different for any situation. Uh, in the Netherlands, in Dordrecht, um, you have tide coming in. Uh, you have boats going through your harbor. You have wind. You have... Kids jumping from bridges. But you've seen that the, the wind waves are not so important. If you take the tide out, the ship drops with the water level. But uh, with the wind waves, I'll show it again, they have a much shorter wavelength compared to the ship. So the, the ship doesn't really feel the wind waves. And I can show that really old school on a blackboard. So time over here, it could be distance. But so we have a very slow moving wave like tide. And uh, th so this is our boat, about this size. I'm not good at drawing pirate logos. These kind of waves, well, these waves compared to that wave, um, th that's Discovery Deadliest Catch material. It means that your boat will move with your wave. 
So, so the wavelength, the distance between peaks, is much bigger than the length of the boat. The boat will just follow the waves. So if you want to know if a boat fits under a bridge, it's very important to measure these waves. If, on the other hand, you have um, a, a ver very rapid uh, changing waves, uh, wind or children jumping from bridges, something like this, compared to the length of that boat, you know, I'll draw the boat in here with a red piece of chalk, So the wave will just average out over the length of the boat. So a little sail. So those little waves caused by wind or jumping kids, you don't want to measure them when judging if a ship fits under a bridge. But in reality, you're not if you measure at one certain point, say a bridge in Dordrecht, um, you, you have this tidal wave and you have this wind-induced waves, but what you measure is the combined effect of that. So that would be something like this. And then if you use uh, an acoustic distance measurement that I just used in my previous lecture or something more expensive, you want to be absolutely sure that you measure at the right time because you want to be sure that when a ship passes, it doesn't hit your bridge. So it's, a, it's, it's vital to know how often you... Um, have to measure. So to demonstrate how often you need to measure, I got an experiment here. Uh, I got a small list of stuff I want to do online. Um, in my previous lecture I had soldering and in this lecture I've got Legos. Um, what I'm going to use this Legos for, just like a cup of coffee, Ooh, good. This is really simple Legos. Um, when I turn on this uh, uh, motor it will turn around and it will move this little flag up and down. That's all it does. It's not really complicated. Interesting is, from the guys that run Club Air, they gave me the stroboscope. And they let me play with it. Anyone with epilepsy, don't look. Close your eyes or something. Okay, so all, all other lights off. Yeah. So you can see where this orange little flag is. So when I turn it on, you'll see it moving up and down relatively slow. A lot slower than when you, when you saw it in the bright light. Good thing about this light is that even I can dance. Um, so I can now play with the with the speed that we measure, any flash of the stroboscope is a measurement for our eyes. So I can turn it down slower, and I can turn it but faster, and, and there's just one speed for the stroboscope, if I'm really good, where, the, where, where it will just not move at all. And I can, of course, I can turn it on very fast, and, and then you can just see what's going on. Um, so, so at this speed, yeah, so oh, now you see it's not moving. Oh, by the way, the camera we're using this to record this for on YouTube is also measuring. So this will have a very weird effect um, when put online. The editor that needs to do that is not going to like this. Um, I'm going to put this one off and I'll go back to the blackboard to explain what, just, what you just saw. So what I made was a little orange flag that moved up and down in time. So I put time over here and distance over there. 
So it moves like that. So my, I, I, some of my friends teach in high schools and they have a, they had courses in how to draw on blackboard. I didn't. Okay, so measuring. Um, you can clearly see what happened when it was standing still. When you measure exactly at this time interval, you will not see anything moving. So the, the speed that at which we flashes, our measurement speed, was equal to the speed that the thing needed to go up and down once. Flash, flash. So that will be a problem considering the bridge again. For example, if we are, if we are really unlucky, we could do our measurements every time over here, and then we, and then we then we think, oh, we're measuring the tidal wave quite good, but in fact we're continuously measuring too low, and then we're going to say to the boat, you'll fit, where in reality they won't. So, what happened when I was turning on that flash speed? I made it slower, then I didn't have my second flash at exactly one cycle, but just a little bit later, and then later and later. And then you can see that if you decrease the measuring speed, you will observe a wave that's not actually there. So you're not, you're not only running the risk of missing a frequency, a frequency, number of vibrations. So you're running the risk of being continuously too low and getting a boat against your bridge. You're also running the risk that you're gonna say, you're gonna observe a wave that's not there. You may say this is a tidal wave and you may say it's, it's uh, low tide. So that's, that's problematic for people operating bridges. But not only them, uh, scientists as well. They're, they're looking for information in whatever they measured. And so when they see a slow moving wave like that, they're going to say, well, I'm measuring some slow moving phenomena, where in fact it's just a measurement error. So the, the solution to measure correctly, I just showed it by, by cranking up the measuring frequency of the stroboscope, it would look like something like this. And then you can actually follow the high frequency wave as well as the low frequency waves. So the, the, the case where it just goes okay is if you have two measurements per wave. It's about the mathematical boundary. With two measurements per wave, um, you either have top, bottom, top, bottom, and then at least you see something's going up and down. Um, if you're unlucky, you have mid, 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 and you don't see any changes. But so two times per wave is, is the boundary if you have more than two measurements per, uh, per wave, then you can recognize whatever wave is happening within your measurement. Yeah, it means that if kids are jumping in your bridge next to the uh, jumping in the water next to your bridge, you have to measure very quickly. That's a problem for me because I like building my own me measurements equipment. I like people at home building their own measurement equipment. But when I have to measure at very high frequencies, I don't know, 40,000 times a second to get all the waves out. That's going to be hard with all this simple electronics. Then I have to buy expensive stuff, and then the whole point of people can do this at home um, just goes away. So what we're actually looking for is, is a way to, and I'm pointing back at the, at the blackboard, a way to separate the, 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 the shorter wavelengths from the longer wavelengths because that's the relevant information for us and we want to do that in a way without us having to measure very quickly 
So the mathematics needed for that will be explained in my next lecture and I will use the fifth of Beethoven for that.